So y'all been asking for a while for me and Kelly to get together and do a little shoe talk. And you know what? I feel like there's no better time than now. Cause our boy, our dog, Tiago Lemos, just dropped his newest silhouette, the MB-808. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Steezus. Here with my good homie, the big dog, Kelly Hart. What up, dog? What's up, Playboy? Yeah. Uh, you want to do the honors? You want to I'll open it up, the man. Top real these are quick? size nine. They are my size. Hey. Thanks to Tyrone for hooking these up <laughs> at New Balance. It's a buttery Ooh. colorway, too. Well, that's you right now, actually. All the way head to I, toe. I do have blue. I got the hat. Yep, that's <laughs> head to toe. There we go. So the thing that I really like about Tiago is that you know he's super hands-on when it comes to the colorways and yeah. like how he wants to represent his shoe. Yeah. He's always been somebody from... He, from my perspective, as soon as he came out the gate, like doing his thing with DC and all that, he was always very just on point. He had his finger on the pulse with what he wanted to rock, how he wanted to rock it, and the inspiration that it came from. And I feel like he's held true to that. Even in this one, the first one, obviously, the 1010 was like super teched out, but I feel like this one, he's taken some like maybe mid 90s inspiration and put it into yeah. this in a little bit more subtle way. I mean, he's a huge uh, advocate and respects all the older skateboards that came before him. Absolutely. And you could tell in the skateboarding, the way he rocks shoes, and you could tell that in the design of the shoe that he worked with uh, Jeff Mikud over at New Balance. And mm -hmm. you could tell they took all the stuff they like grew up skating in and just the influenced their skateboarding, the way they dress, they input it in the shoe yeah. and the technology. It's a little heavier, but the thing is, is the shoes back in the day, when we grew up skating, they were like a little thicker because they were like pretty much indestructible. Yeah. They lasted so long and that's yeah. what this shoe feels like. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and lace these up while yeah. we're here. <laughs> What's your way of tying a shoe, especially like a shoe like this? All right, so this shoe's a little, I don't wanna say it's strange, it's just different because it's got the, the eyelets at the, at the top. They have like rubber on top of them, which is actually yeah. something you don't really see too often. Well, that helps uh, with like, you're not ripping the shoe. You're not laces. ripping them out, yeah. yeah. So for me though, the like the mainstay is like I always got to make sure that the laces For hit days. at the same time at the same space. Yeah. And then on the right shoe, I have to go right over left. Yeah. So doing it that way as opposed to left over right or crisscross because some people will do it and just like yeah they don't the know where it's all yeah, yeah it's all messed it's up. All messed people don't up. think about that. You have to think yeah. of, you don't just you have to look at. S symmetrically, like which exactly. way it works. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all about symmetry for me, and yeah. that's uh, it's something that's important. But on a shoe like this, so you have these, and then you also have which you can't really see um, at first glance, but you have sort of like hidden lace loops too, so you can oh, yeah. kind of keep it at the same same pattern. And the way that the laces go when you have those that style lace loop is like very reminiscent of the '90s. Yeah, I feel like sure. a lot of those shoes had those lace loops like that. Um, so for this one though, I just think I would probably do right over left and then go with the regular eyelets that are on the outside. What about, so on these ones, I would go left over right, right? Or yeah. would you, okay, that's, yep. cause. And then for the actual bow at the top, there's also a right or a wrong way to lace. So I don't know if you've ever paid attention to it, but you know how sometimes when you lace your shoes, instead of the the bow going horizontally, it'll kind of flip and yeah, be up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's actually, the knot that you make, if you do it that way, it actually comes a loose. Okay. But if you do it the other way where it goes, I'll show you when we get to the top. Yeah. You go under and over instead of over and under. Okay. It actually makes a knot that gets tighter as you pull it as opposed to the opposite. So See, there's a, there's a science behind this. Guys. There really is, and, man. And he knows all about it. I learn from this dude all the time, but it's funny, man. I, I lace my shoes the same way every time pretty much. Yeah. Like, honestly, lacing this shoe up, you can tell this thing is well constructed. So now See, when we get to the top, this is what I do. I usually just go whatever, left over right, and then I'll go under from the left side. So because I'm right-handed, that just makes the most sense to me. And then I'll loop this right Oh, you right loop one. with the right hand. Yeah. I and always loop with the left hand for some reason. Okay, yeah, so yeah. It, would, it would be the same, just I yeah, guess yeah. backwards technically, but yeah. instead of what normally feels right is going over it that way, you come from behind and go under it. And then when you pull it out like that, it stays oh, horizontal. Stays, okay. So that way, and I learned that, I think there's actually a TED talk on it, but I learned that when I was rocking Janowski's that came with the leather laces. If you didn't lace them properly, they would be the, the vertical way. And that was just a recipe for disaster because every time you would push or do anything, they would just kind of unravel and come loose. So that's a little, a little trick tip for y'all out there. This is the way I would rock it right for sure. Here. Because then you could also kind of play with loosening the bottom part too, so it doesn't feel super floppy at the top. And with the tongue straps, you're pretty secure to just yeah, kind of rock. Strapped. You know, I, a lot of people um, I know they're like they cut the tongue strap just to give them some 
I don't know, air, I guess, or it feels a little oh. looser, but I don't I do not do that. No, I've, really... I've always been, yeah. The thing about this one is it doesn't have a puffy tongue either, yeah. so it doesn't feel, from what I can tell, it wouldn't feel restricting. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes the shoes that have the puffier tongue and the tongue strap, it definitely could be a little bit on the, the top of your foot, like say you have a high arch or something like yeah. that. It's got the the tech midsole and outsole where you know it's um there's board feel but you're not going to be crazy like if yeah. you're land primo or, or you know you're jumping down things but then the upper is still it's minimal in comparison to his first shoe to 1010 because that one was fully teched i actually have a i brought a pair oh yeah let's bring those i mean out. they're going to be double the size of this yeah but. this guy wore size 14 <laughs> shoes is insane Ooh, what? So, <laughs> i can't even like really even look at it yo <laughs> what dude i know Oh it's, my gosh. Yeah, that's a lot. You I know mean, what's it, funny though? Actually, um, the original colorway, it was like the white, blue, and yellow that dropped of that mm -hmm. one. Uh, our boy Tyrone, shout out Ty, hit me up. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he, this is at least what he told me, um, I got the pair from Kawhi Leonard stash. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow! We you swoop from Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, yeah that's ask. hard. This, that was just that was, that was what I was told. Uh, so, Ty, if that was you. That's, that's uh, dope, appreciate man. you, Big Doc. No, that's awesome, man. Because it kind of like it has still the toe the the toe inspiration. But yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's the same thing almost. So that's toe. one thing that New Balance does with a lot of their models is the asymmetrical toe. And yeah. even if you go look at, um, I forgot what the number of it was for PJ shoe. I think it was in the five hundreds or something. Mm -hmm. Um, he didn't actually have a mud guard. It was just triple stitching. Oh, okay. But if you look at the stitching from the top, it still follows that same pattern. Ah. So it's like a completely open toe box with that stitching. So that's something that they've done for years on a lot of their models, and that's just kind of like their one of their little design cues. This tongue is super good too. It's obviously really light and breathable it's on this so one. So breathable. But yeah. this one's like a little more solid. It has the leather on top, and it still has the breathable tongue. And I mm -hmm. do really like the fact that it's not too thick. I do think like people look at it sometimes they're like, "Whoa, this is actually kind of a like an old school style '90s shoe, yeah, exactly. right?" And I think yep. it gives that vibe, and it's perfect. It's not like you would you could wear it with with shorts, with pants, and it still look, doesn't look like some exactly. old... Exactly. It, it looks... It's like a modern-day 90s shoe, yeah. I would say. Even with a shoe like this where it is slim down or minimal in comparison to that, his pants are super baggy, so you want to have something that fits that aesthetic, too. Totally. Like, when he first got on New Balance, I don't know if he ever really rocked any of, like, the New Balance numerics because they were all very, like, yeah. slim and, mm -hmm. and just very minimal. So he brought something to the table for New Balance America that they hadn't really seen before. I tried them on too, and they're super comfy. Uh, I, I was like, I get jealous because I don't want to wear all these shoes I know, sometimes. I bet. But <laughs> it's all good. I can still kick it in sometimes, chill around the house or something. But like, yeah. no, I, I just it's like like I want to wear them a because they're great shoes, but like it's Tiago, and yes. to watch him come from like the favelas or yes. like like deep in Brazil to come out, and I remember first meeting him on a skate chest one day in San Diego, and I was yeah. like. Who is? I was trying to hard with this gap, <laughs> this gap, and he just came out and all like front heeled it. I was like, "Yo, Dang. who is this dude?" That's so and sick. he was like just a little kid, man, and uh, he was super nice and humble. And um, to see where he's at, even where he got into the skate contest, he was doing street mm -hmm. leagues, and you know, but now he's just street skating, and it's incredible yeah. to see what he's done and what these. What I heard, what their plan is to drop a few different colors every month. Okay. Uh, maybe just one every month or maybe one or two, but okay. he has new footage Damn, coming sick. along with it. The one he dropped with this with the San Francisco footage. Yeah. So I wonder if each one might have a different inspiration and kind of goes to... Yeah, like, I, that's what I'm thinking, man. Like each so city, dope. he went back to, uh, I think he went to Sao Paulo. What I heard is that he's, he had all this footage and all the different spots in like uh, different cities and mm -hmm. at the end put it all together. Yeah. So it'll be rad to see all... Oh, kind of like a, a whole... A compilation. A compilation video yeah. part, essentially. Yeah. So Tiago is like the... <laughs> new generation Rodrigo TX. Yes. In a sense, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. we have Rodrigo, we watched him come up and like not necessarily knowing how to speak English and doing the whole thing. And I feel like Tiago is on that same trajectory. He took the blueprint and yeah. he's like, okay. I, and you can also see he's always had the respect for the era in which he grew up in. Mm -hmm. So like his switch Mongo was authentic. Oh, yeah, you know no, what I mean? It looks like, authentic. Yeah. It is authentic. There, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no there's no like half stepping, there's no faking the funk. Like it's yeah. very true to who he is and he's been that way throughout his entire career and mm -hmm. leading up to it as well. So to see him be able to come up and like the kids now get to have uh their, you know, Brazilian superstar so to speak and watch that like it's so rad, man. Tiago's a, a really, really dope human, for yeah. real. Yeah. Him working with Jeff Mycutt is an incredible skateboarder. Um, check out some of his video parts, Wild Power and Via Marina. Yeah, that's right. He, yeah. like, ripped. No, he's super good. <laughs> and, like, I used to skate with him back in the day and to see what he's doing with this shoe. And, like, there's a photo of him, you know, having, like, 
the shoe kind of built out on the wall. Oh, yeah, like, all spread the pieces out. individually placed up. I've never designed a shoe or anything like that, but I'm like, man, what an eye to have to yes. work it and like to put things together. And then Dude. it must be a crazy thing to just sit down with, with a friend like Tiago and Jeff mm -hmm. and like just come out with something like this. Straight up. After you're done with looking at it, like, wow, this is beautiful. Um, the lines are super dope. The colorways are good. And it looks like just like a shoe, kind of like a traditional New Balance shoe. Exactly. That's the dopest part about somebody like Tiago being a, a very solid skateboarder and having that inspiration from streetwear and just regular just NBA, basketball culture, whatever it might be, and taking that and, and, and putting it into skateboarding in a very just real way. Yeah. I always trip out on the numbers that come from yeah, New Balance. Yeah, yeah. And like at first you don't, if you don't hear the story, you don't really know, but supposedly like the number on it is coordinated with how much technology is put into it. Basically, is that yeah. kind of what, it, what yeah. it is? So that's the thing too, is like New Balance, they have so many different numbers, but they have some of the staples that are like, you know, your 990s and your 550s and things that are, um, people do a lot of collaborations with. Yeah. But yes, the number on it essentially means the lower that it is, the less technical. So a lot of the New Balance numerics are like in the 300 range because mm -hmm. they're very like Vauxhall, super simple, a lot of board feel. Mm -hmm. And then as you get higher, and I want to say, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I'm pretty sure the highest one is the 2002R. Oh my which, God, <laughs> like it's a thousand more than this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So it's got a lot of, they just, <laughs> that's a lot of tech, That's dude. a lot of tech. They did yeah. quite a few, uh, I think it's called the protection pack most recently where they, if you look at it, you can tell it's, there's a lot going on there, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel overdone, mm -hmm. but for skateboarding, for numeric to go up to a 10-10, that was kind of crazy because they hadn't any, had anything that high up until that point. And I think a lot of the tech is like on the inside as far as the, um, the foam and the midsole and things to kind of keep yourself, your foot protected and the actual rubber pieces and things to keep the, the shoe from falling apart, essentially. Yeah. We were looking at it the other, or last night actually about how the sole oh, is yeah, yeah. very, very thin. Dude, the insole is nothing. Yeah, it's nothing, which is not a bad thing at all. It's like, it's just, it's a comfy, right. mellow sole, but the inside, like the actual... Yep, that's the midsole. This insole, yeah. the midsole is where the foam um, absorb system is. So yeah. this is actually a good indication of how good the board feel is. Because yeah. if you have like a, a super crazed insole and you got a lot of foam in the midsole that means your board feel is going to be a little bit less than uh, a traditional just like foam insert but yeah. this is like i said it's a good indicator that there's tech there to keep your foot uh safe and secure like even with the little heel oh yeah little heel guards too right like there. it yeah, keeps yeah. everything nice and snug so they've done a really good job of making sure this has a nice breathability in the upper um, board control, board feel, but also being able to withstand the way Tiago skates. I know. I mean, like, the good thing is, too, is, like, I think one of the most important things on a skateboard, even when you're just chilling, you want to look down and be, like, hyped. You want to be really stoked on what you're wearing. Yeah. And when you're skating in it, when you do a trick, you do their 60 flip, and you got some shoes that you're hyped on Straight in the fit up. you're wearing, you're like... Oh, uh, it all just lays yeah, perfectly. It, like, it yeah. can make you feel way... Like, you change your whole day. Absolutely. You know? and, so. that, and to your point, the design we were talking about earlier, like being able to wear with shorts, with jeans, with whatever, that top-down view is also just as important. Oh, yeah, for like sure. You, so, like, you're late, like, you wouldn't want it to be short at the top, so you need to have it be um, one eyelid down. Like, you still want to be able to look down and be stoked. And then from every other angle that people catch, that's going to be just as dope, too. So. Yeah. It's rad that New Balance can be so like their variety is like from the lower tier end shoes of like the like the three hundreds mm -hmm. up to like the one thousands. Yeah, they yeah. really have shoes that's kind of for everyone. Exactly. Where if you're the vulcanized dude and you like thinner shoes, they got that covered for you. The Jamie yeah. Foy shoe is rad, and then you get a little the bigger shoes. If you like the more padding with this, yeah. you got and you got different styles of it, and you can support your one of the best skateboarders That's the on the best, planet. Exactly. Yeah. You're supporting your homie, and if you say you do like a more minimal shoe to actually skate in, but you want to have a chiller or something and kind of rock, like this could also be used as a, as a chill shoe. Like it's just got that, that mid-90s inspiration to where you don't feel like you have to skate it or... Um, if you're rocking it and your, your feet won't be hurting because there's a lot of tech into it, I think that this is something that could go um, go that way as well. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I'm, I'm actually pretty curious and excited to see what new colorways are oh, coming. Absolutely. So absolutely. I'm, I'm sure we'll see them very soon. I think they're releasing them uh, throughout the rest of the year. Uh, there's not too many pro shoes out there. It's hard. It's kind of yeah. a dying thing, um, but it's 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 much deserved to people that deserve it. Absolutely. Like that, yeah, there's, there's a no few people. That. Ashad, you know what I mean. Yeah. Tiago, Jamie Foy. Yep. I, I do believe in like you know there's a Shane O'Neill and like there is those pros out there that I do believe 
should have those pro shoes. And yeah, the people that have exactly. them, they deserve it. And it's amazing that when we were kids, we never would have thought that pro skateboarders or even our friends in any way would be like riding for New Balance have pro shoes or Nike or Adidas or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like Tyshawn having a pro shoe. It's like... Yep. It's like be those are the elite. If you put those all all the people that have pro shoes and those brands, yeah, that is yeah. all elite. Absolutely, pro skaters that are, that are changing the game, that are Absolutely. leading the way. Absolutely, and you know what's even doper about to kind of piggyback off of that too. Not only do our friends have shoes with these brands, but there are people from other industries, other sports, other oh, like yeah. big time people wearing skate shoes it's amazing and that like that right there just seeing those little things it's it shows where we are but it also shows the design elements of footwear are going so like just so far into a good space that other people want to be a part of mm -hmm. what we're doing in skating and not only because it's cool but because they respect it they respect it so you guys go get a chance go check out a shoe yeah it's banging i we totally back it and we love Absolutely. it it looks fresh so Go check it out and 808. It's out now. New colorway is coming soon. Shout out to Yago. Shout out New Balance. If you haven't gotten a chance to get your eyes on them and get your hands on them and get your feet in them, I highly recommend it.